When did you see an absolute jerk get wrecked by karma? I'm a mechanic and I used to work at a non-dealer garage. While I was in my third year of my apprenticeship, I wasn't earning much but I was on around £120 a week. Minimum wage was about £200 at the time in the UK. I could just about afford my own car. It was nothing special, it was a Toyota Corolla 2.0 diesel that literally sounded like a transit van when I put my foot down, and the big ends sounded like they were trying to slowly eat their way through the block. I was just on my way back to work after my lunch break, and as I was waiting at some traffic lights, some kids around my age, 17 through 19, pulled up alongside in a Honda Civic shouting stuff such as, Get a real car! because I'd overtaken them on a dual carriageway. The light turned green and the driver accelerated and pulled away like a bat out of heck. Less than half a mile down the road, I saw a big cloud of blue smoke. It was them. They'd blown the engine. I got back to work and told one of my co-workers what had happened, and we both had a laugh about it, as you do. Fast forward an hour or so, and a recovery truck pulls in. It was the same Honda Civic that was at the traffic lights. My co-worker was booking the car in. He asked the driver what car it was, to which the driver responded, a Honda Civic. Oh, you should get a real car, was my co-worker's reply. I was at the mall with my best friend, and we were walking to my car when a random driver in a passing car yelled out a homophobic slur. As we turned in shock, we saw the driver and his car go up the median and smash his front end into the stop sign. While I was an undergrad, I was driving from my parents' house and pulled up to a stop sign. Two middle high school white boys on bikes crossed in front of me and started yelling stuff and throwing gang signs at me. One of them proceeds to flip over the front of his bike and face plants into the sidewalk. I slow down, roll down my windows, and laugh as loud as I can at them as I drive away. On a way to a party with some friends, another car full of kids flew up behind us, leaning out of the windows, yelling things at us, and then they crossed the double yellow lane on a two-lane road to pass us. When we came around the next bend, they'd crashed into our house and were all getting out and running away. I did not realize that today's video would have such an automotive theme. Turns out, if you're leaning out your window or hanging off your bike screaming obscenities at strangers, you have an increased chance of eating number two. So maybe don't do it, folks. I was crossing a one-way street in the crosswalk at an intersection with a stoplight. A guy in an SUV came flying up to the red light and made a left turn without stopping to go the wrong way down the street I'm crossing. He nearly hit me and another pedestrian in the crosswalk. We both turned to angrily yell something at him, but a cop happened to be at the light and pulled him over before we got a word out. The guy must have gotten a ticket for wrong way in a one-way street, failing to stop at the light and hopefully reckless driving for almost hitting two pedestrians in a crosswalk. During a huge snowstorm a couple of years ago, my friend and I lived right by a small hill. A lot of cars couldn't go up the hill, so my friend and I were helping people move to the curb of the street. Now, we lived by a highway exit and it was rush hour, so there was a lot of backup. Suddenly, this D-bag in a huge Chevy Avalanche pulls by us and yells, You freaks are backing up the highway for miles! He tried to speed off, but ended up getting stuck and unable to go up the hill. We looked and laughed. We ended up helping him to move to the shoulder as he has this look of embarrassment on his face the whole time. I've got the perfect story for this. When I was at a major league baseball game one time, there was a vendor with a horrendous speech impediment. It was so bad that I could barely understand him when he screamed out, Cold beer! Or cold beer. I heard a kid about two rows behind me begin to giggle and mock the vendor. I'm not sure if the vendor heard this going on, but it was definitely an earshot of him. I ignored the brat's jokes and went back to watching the game. The next batter popped the baseball straight up in the air. When it came down, it nailed this kid right in the knee. That was probably one of the most satisfying moments I've had in my life so far. Later in the game, a batter let go of their bat by accident and it flew into the stands. It ended up hitting some dude right in the chest. I can't even imagine what he did to deserve that one. My cousin is a D1 NCAA runner at Loyola and he was out running one day when some D-bag drove up next to him and threw his full hot coffee out of his window at him. My cousin caught the cup without any spillage and returned to sender, before running down a wooded trail. I'll try to make this story as uncomplicated as possible. I work at a restaurant, and we often use Groupon to promote. 
As part of the Groupon rules, only one Groupon may be used per table. People constantly try to break this rule and often try any tactic to try to get us to accept multiple Groupons at once. So this one time, a group of five comes in with three Groupons. They asked the hostess if they could use them. She said no. They asked me, and I said the same thing. So they order the cheapest bottle of wine at the table. I go to get it, but unfortunately we didn't have it. I went back, let them know, and one of the customers went, Well, since you didn't have the bottle we wanted, you should let us use our Groupons. I think it's a joke and I give a mild laugh. The guy puts his offended face on and goes, Oh no, I'm serious. Please bring your manager. My manager comes, listens to the gentleman, and then tells him he can't accept his Groupon, but he can give him a discount on a pitcher of sangria, which is the next cheapest option for a big table, and a 10% discount on their whole check. I bring the sangria, and they don't like it. They send it back. They decide to order another bottle of wine. Again, it's the next cheapest option on the drinks menu. I get the bottle to the table, I open the bottle, and they taste it. The guy at the head of the table goes, Hmm, I don't know. Do you guys have this by the glass? Uh, yes sir, we do. I think we'll do that. Just bring us three glasses and we'll share it. Throughout the rest of the meal, they were increasingly demanding, rude, and just obnoxiously needy. No request came with a please or thank you. I'm a professional and I just tough it out, smile it out, and I do my best to get them out as quickly as possible. So when it's time to pay, I bring the check with the 10% already taken off. They ask me about the Groupon and I respond with, No problem. Do you have it on paper or on your phone? It's in the phone. As soon as I put it down on the table to redeem it and write all the tables, poof, the phone runs out of battery. As they scramble, curse, and realize they won't be able to use any of their Groupons, not a single care in this world could take the look of a satisfied working girl off my face. This lady I saw was in such a hurry to leave the parking lot, she decided to forego the queue and instead hazard the hilly median. Her car got stuck. Everyone was pointing and laughing. Having her car towed, needless to say, took longer than if she had just bloody waited, and she was pictured in the newspaper to boot. I had a woman tailgating me, even though I was going about five miles over the speed limit. It was a curvy road with no passing lane. We finally got to a spot with a passing lane and she blew by me, laying on the horn, easily going 20 miles over the speed limit. About 10 miles down the road, she got pulled over by a state trooper. Where she got pulled over, the speed limit went from 55 to 35. I saw the trooper at the gas station later and thanked him. He said she was so rude he wrote the ticket for 40 over, which is a much bigger fine. Most officers here cut you a break and only write it for 5 over, which cuts the fine in half, usually. This one guy pulled up beside my mother and flipped her off, calling her a B-word. The light turned green and he accelerated like a bat out of heck, only to get absolutely T-boned. My friend threw his straw wrapper on the ground. Two seconds later, he dropped his whole soda and spilled it all over the grass. Environmental karma right there. Sadly, I don't think that this would have encouraged your friend to pick up the rubbish from the straw and the rest of his drink. Oh well, at least he got screwed. Okay, I used to be a crystal addict, but I've been clean for about seven years. Anyway, I'd picked up a guy I kind of knew. He was a crystal cook. We'll say his name was Chris, because it is, but he went by Fruit Bat. We went back to my house and chilled for a bit, did some substances, and probably took some stuff apart or cleaned something. Well, we got this bright idea to go tweak out at Walmart at five in the morning. As we're leaving, I see that he'd left his CD case on my couch. I didn't really know him that well and he had some good music in there, so I could have easily said nothing and gained some new music. However, me being the crystal addict with a heart of gold, I told him he was about to leave his CDs. This is important later. He stuffs it in his backpack and we take off. About a half mile down the road, we got pulled over for his idiot butt not wearing a seatbelt. The cop comes up and asks for my license and registration and asks me a few questions. He then asks me to step out of the car and asks me what's up with my friend. I asked him what he meant and he told me the guy was acting very nervous. He asks if he can search the vehicle and I say, yes. Why, oh why did I do that? I guess in my head at the time we'd just polished off the last of the substances that we had. Part of the way through searching my car, he comes back and asks me if there's anything in Fruit Bat's backpack before he opens it. I told him I didn't know because it wasn't mine. It belonged to the other guy. 
The officer then tells me that Fruitbat says it wasn't his. It was in my vehicle and therefore in my possession. He puts it on his hood and starts basically pulling out part of a crystal lab from the backpack. He puts me, and only me, in handcuffs and continues searching through the bag. He then pulls a CD case out of one of the front pockets, looks at it for a moment and says, What was your name again? I tell him my name. He sets the CD case on the hood, walks off to talk to the other guy. I look down at the case and on the front it says, Chris's Book of Bangs. He cuffs the guy and puts him in his car, uncuffs me while lecturing me on associating with undesirables, and lets me go. Throughout the entire ordeal, Fruitbat would not make eye contact with me. He went to prison for intent to manufacture crystal. In short, not stealing some guy's CDs kept me from going to prison for intent to manufacture crystal. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. We had a fire drill at school, and being rather a large school, we took up the entire street outside. Most cars passing by understood that it would be a few moments, but not this one lady. She got so angry at waiting, she screamed at all of us, backed up her car the entire block going about 40 miles an hour, and hit a pole. One of her mirrors fell off. We all laughed. Another high school story. We were hanging out at the local pizza place after a football game and some kids from another school showed up and started making trouble. I'm a little hazy on the specifics, but somehow they shattered the glass front door of the restaurant and then fled. The cops were called and as they were questioning people about the incident, those kids for some reason doubled back, lost control of their car, drove off the road and got the car stuck on top of a small boulder in front of the strip mall. The cops very casually strolled over and cuffed them. Mine happened just last night. A guy at my poker table refused to take his friend back to Atlanta, which was about two hours away, where the guy's wife and child were being hospitalized after a car wreck. He said he'd just paid for a beer that hadn't come yet, and the game was really good. His friend was freaking out, understandably. The next hand, I flopped the best possible hand, straight to the queen, and he flopped the second best possible hand. I took all of his money, about 320 bucks. The table was trying to hold back their laughter. I tossed the guy five bucks for the beer and told him to drive safe. My neighbor many years ago was taunting me and my friends during my birthday party, like he was being a severe jerk, calling us names, yelling at my mum, and then my mum called my dad, and my dad came over and ripped him a new butt. The kid called the cops for, quote, verbal assault from my dad. But it turns out the cops just got the kid in trouble because they found beer in his car. <laughs> I almost cried at mine, it was so awesome. I was driving one day down a two-lane road trying to get back to home after work. It was five o'clock traffic and it was bad. I mean like once a month, really, really crappy traffic. It was a four-lane, 40 mile per hour road with a raised median in the middle. There were cars backed up for about two miles going at three miles per hour towards the traffic liberating intersection. It took me about 40 minutes to get to the end and I was in the right hand lane. Suddenly I see out of my left hand mirror an absolute idiot in his d-bag truck that's jumped out onto the median, he was really far back, and starting to barrel down the grass median at about 20 miles per hour. He's skipped tons of people and finally when the light turned green and people started moving, he jumped back down off the median and was nearly hit by two people. By this time, he was parallel with me, so I caught a good glimpse of him. Just a regular old stereotypical D-bag. The light turned red and everyone stops. Suddenly, a guy pulls up next to him and starts honking to get his attention. The D-bag ignores him and turns his radio up. The guy in the other car keeps honking to get his attention, but no luck. Finally, the guy gets out of his car and the D-bag rolls down his window and says, what the frick do you want, dude? And the guy goes, Yeah, I'm pretty sure you either cracked your engine block or ripped off your oil filter when you jumped that curb. The D-bag just shrugs and says, So what? So I look down and I see a ton of oil spilling out the front end of his truck. The light turns green and he starts weaving in and out of traffic and gets so far ahead of me that I can't see him. More traffic and about 5-10 to 10 minutes down the road, I see him pulled over with white smoke coming out of his car. So as I'm passing him, I give him the good old finger while blasting my horn. It was a good day.
As we said, we're having a really strong showing from the automotive crowd today. I guess there are just so many things on the road that can go wrong when you're flaunting the rules that are meant to keep you safe. And this guy so deserved what he got. Good stuff. I work the night shift at McDonald's. Every night it was really crowded and there was one moment I'll never forget. A girl and her friends pulled up and had just ordered one medium sweet tea with extra ice. These girls are being real witches. Like the kind of cliche hot girls that are too cool for you, except these girls were on the south side of average borderline ugly. We're out of medium cups and rather than run back to get some more, I decided to just give her a large cup of tea and she takes it without question and they drive off. No thank you or anything. Well, eventually they come back like an hour later. They pull up, the driver girl puts it in park, and the passenger girl who got the tea starts screaming at me about how she ordered a medium extra ice, why did I get her a large, etc, etc. All this time I'm just thinking, well then don't drink it all, sheesh. She keeps screaming until it finishes with her saying, F you, and then she throws the full sweet tea at me. Except she misses, badly. She was in the passenger seat, and when she threw it, it hit the top of the car door frame, and the whole cup exploded inside the car, covering these ugly witches in a wet, sticky mess. It gets better. The driver, who hasn't said a word this whole time, shrieks in fury now that she's soaked and floors it. Except she didn't take it out of park, so they sit there, engine howling for a good three seconds, before she pushes the stick into drive while she's flooring it. There are ugly clanks and not good sounding noises coming from the car, and they jerk out of view as they're now screaming at the sudden acceleration out of the drive through exit, crossing the street and hitting a small ditch that took them 10 minutes to get out of. Once they drove off, I went on break and laughed at them the whole time they tried to get out while eating my meal. Sweet, sweet karma. My brother and I were in the backyard throwing one of those foam three-pronged boomerangs. It was fairly new and we were learning how to use it. The boomerang had hard plastic edges that whistled or something if you threw it just right. My brother and I played for a while and eventually he said something like, Wow, you suck at throwing this. He turns around to go do something and I threw the boomerang as hard as I can up and to the right. When it hits its peak, a huge gust of wind takes the thing and launches it 70 plus feet across the yard, hitting my brother in the side of the head hitting his ear and dropping him to the ground, crying. There's a two-lane, 40-mile-per-hour road through a commercial area that's particularly dangerous because people regularly speed, change lanes without signaling, among other things. One day, I had a car full of idiot teens in the other lane who thought it would be funny to match my car's speed, no matter what speed I was going, making it impossible for me to get into that lane at any point. They were making it very obvious that they thought this was hilarious. They eventually made a left turn onto a connecting road, and because they were still staring at me, smashed into the sign that was right at the corner. I happily pulled over, waited for the cops, and acted as a witness. As a bonus, they had stolen that car. This happened to a co-worker the other day. We work at a restaurant, which happens to be a theatre as well, and a couple walks out on my fellow server. It's a typical $20-$30 to $30 tab, but they forgot their camera. The server grabbed it and refused to hand it over until they paid their bill. Sweet, sweet karma. Also, if you've ever walked out of a restaurant, screw you. An ex of mine was working as a lifeguard at the ocean and was throwing sticks at a seagull. He had his keys on one of those springy bracelet things and when he threw a stick, it got stuck in the bracelet and pulled off his keys. He had to jump in the ocean to get his keys back before they sank. The seagull watched from the top of the water slide and from the sounds it was making, I'd like to think it was laughing. I have a story where I was the deliverer of the instant karma. I was about 16 and I was out for lunch with some friends in the brief window I had between school and practice. Service was a little slow, so I had to eat quickly and run to practice. In the restaurant I'd just been eating in, there was a pack of younger kids, maybe 13, who had been causing trouble. They left a couple of minutes before I did, so I caught up to them pretty quick because I was running. They'd decided to control the entire sidewalk with no room for anyone to go around them. An old man was coming from the other direction and not one of them moved. The old man had to walk on the lawn to get past these kids. Then, as he was going, one of the kids silly-stringed him. 
I saw red and unleashed the mother of all flying elbows on the kid with the silly string right in the eye socket. The kid dropped and I just kept on running. Honestly, thinking back on it, I'm a little ashamed I resorted to violence so easily, but gosh darn it, those kids had it coming. I can only hope that they learned a life lesson that day. I was just starting at the gym a few years back, trying hard to work off the fact that my gamer years had packed onto my frame. I was on the bench doing my workout, low weights, high reps, I think I had about 110 and the bar, and some juice head walks by and scoffs when he sees me sweating my butt off, struggling through my reps. So champ, bro. So champ. He goes over to his own bench and loads it up with weights. These are the assisted bench machines and not free weights. He pushes out a few reps. I can see him sweating it while I'm drinking some water and taking a break. After three reps, he can't push it up anymore and the bar falls on his chest and starts crushing him. He's flailing around, kicking his legs ineffectively like a roach that's been flipped on its back. I slowly walk over to him and look him in the eyes. He's got this crazy, dying animal desperation on his face and the veins are practically exploding out of his neck. I take pity on him and help lift the bar back off him and onto the rack. As I'm walking away, I look over my shoulder and say, Champ, bro. For the record, he thanked me and apologized. I was over it before he even started speaking. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.